Unit 18 Planning in India When India attained independence in 1947, not only was its economy in a stagnant condition but also sluggish one. A very important and economic, economically developed part had gone to West Pakistan and India literally had to start from the scratch. Obviously, the immediate solution to the otherwise dis, disappo, disappidated economy was not to rely on the market mechanism and private enterprise alone and rather adopt a combination of state and market forces, the rules of which were to be decided by the economic planning as an instrument of economic development. Consequently, planning commission was set in 1950 to assess the requirements of the economy for the proper utilization of resources. India opted central planning as an instrument instrument of economic development based on the experience of socialist countries, but adapted to Indian democratic framework. The first plan was adopted in 1952-51. Since 1952-51, India has completed 10 five-year five-year plans till 2007 and also five annual plans first in 1966 to 69 and then 1990 to 1992 the 11th five-year plan is in progress at present since 2007 general approach towards planning what what do we need planning why do we need planning plans are documents that ensure a systematic growth in an economy they provide a framework where all the sectors and regions are integrated for the overall growth of the country. India plans also followed a strategy where not, where not only the immediate needs were recognized, but a long-term perspective was given for overall growth of the economy. India acted for planning with exactly the same purpose even before independence. Both left-wing and right-wing leaders were equally vehement supporters of planning in pre-independent India. Their view was that if India is to industrialize, the planning must have a strategy for number one, heavy engineering and machine making industry. Second, research institutes and third, electric power or energy. Role of small scale industries was also stressed. As a result, we saw famous Bombay plan 1944 emphasizing on industrialization as an as a general approach towards planning history of planning on the eve of independence india had to confront three immediate problems influx of refugees food shortages and mounting inflation accordingly the immediate objective of the first year plan was to rehabilitate the refugees Rapid agricultural development was envisaged as a long-term strategy to give big push to economy, as per Rosentin Rodan. According to him, an economy, if it has stagnated for a long period, would not grow unless a big push is given to it. A bird's eye view suggests that while earlier plans stressed more on economic growth as the major objective, it was objectives like self-reliance, generation of employment and poverty alleviation that was given priority in the latter plans. The seventh plan emphasized more on the modernization of the economy. Since 1991, however, the entire concern of planning and hence of the government shifted towards implementation of a program of macroeconomic stabilization and fiscal correction. Thus, from the 8th plan onward, onwards, the transition from a planned economy to a market-lead economy started and in the subsequent plans, the government policies on trade, industry and public sector undermined, undermined the system of economic planning. 11th plan looked a turn towards inclusive growth and social justice to the poor and marginalized sectors of the economy. Unit 18. Planning in India when India attained independence in Plan Objectives Planning in India has the features of mixed economy, where public and private sectors are assigned major and complementary roles. The basic objectives of planning in India were envisaged as of economic growth, employment, self-reliance and social justice. Apart from these basic objectives, each plan had its own object specific objectives 
depending upon the respective needs, possibilities and constraints in the economy. As given in the second five year plan document, there are four basic objectives of planning in India, which a sizable increase in the national income so as to raise the level of living in the country. Rapid industrialization with particular emphasis on development of basic and heavy industries, a large expansion of employment opportunities and reduction of inequalities in income and wealth and a more even distribution of economic power. If we observe closely, we find that these objectives are interrelated. A significant increase in national income and a marked improvement in living standards cannot be secured without a substantial increase in production of goods and services. To achieve this, we need, need a lot of investments. In the long run, an increase in production can be realized by promoting basic industries like steel, machine building, coal and heavy chemicals. Because these are the industries which have strong linkages linkages with other economic activities for simultaneous development in all these directions are direct directions the available natural resources and manpower have to be used further the pattern of economic development should reflect certain basic social values and purposes development should result in reduction of economic and social inequalities while the above mentioned objectives have been there in all the five year five year plans there have been variations in emphasis on different objectives across plans. While earlier FYP stressed more on economic growth as the major objective, objectives like self-reliance, generation of employment and poverty alleviation were given priority in the latter plans. The seventh plan emphasized more on the modernization of economy. Since 1991, however, the entire concerns of planning and hence of the government shifted towards stability in the economy. Thus, the objective of planning has been focused on bringing down the rate of inflation, interest rate, subsidies, fiscal deficit and foreign debit, and improvements in the imbalance of payment position and foreign exchange reserve. In the process, Indian economy has witnessed a transition from a planned economy to a market economy. An important aspect of Indian planning has been emphasis on human development, whether through reduction of inequalities and poverty alleviation measures in the earlier plans or through rural development programs in the latter plans. For this purpose, the projection of the state was welfare state. This notion, however, was changed and in the ninth and 10th plans, the government expected beneficiaries to be the active participants in the growth process as well. Plan strategy. To achieve the plan objectives mentioned above, India has following certain plan strategy. Indian plans followed a strategy where not only the immediate needs were recognized, but a long-term perspective was also given for overall development of the economy. On the eve of independence, India had to confront three immediate problems with influx of refugees, food shortages, and high inflation. Accordingly, the immediate objective of first, first five-year plan was to consolidate the economy. In order to understand the strategy under different plans in India, the process of planning and development in India can be divided into following four phases. The early phase, development strategy in the 60s, development strategy in the 70s and 80s, and new development strategy. The early phase 1951 to 60. During the early phase 1951 to 60, the emphasis was mainly on growth, that is, to raise the level of output in the economy. There were three main aspects, such as number one, developing sound base for initiating the long term growth of the economy, number two, a comparatively high priority to industrialization, and number third, emphasis on development of capital goods. You may recall that at that point of time, India was emerging from the imbalances created first by the Second World War and subsequently by the partition of country. In such an economic environment, the top priority was to number one, overcome the food shortages, number two, the development of infrastructure like energy, transport and communication, and third, provision of irrigation facilities so that agricultural production increase.
The second five-year plan was built on a strategy of long-term development of the economy. Since the draft of this plan was prepared by P.C. Mahalanobis and Nehru was and Nehru was the prime minister of the country. This strategy is often often called Nehru Mahalanobis Growth Strategy, which emphasizes emphasized emphasized on an industrialization of the economy, particularly heavy industries. The rationale of such a strategy was that in, a, in an industry backward economy with low productivity, the agricultural sector could not provide more employment. It was argued that development of the industrial sector is a precondition of development of agricultural and other sectors. Hence, during this phase of planning, capital goods industry like iron and steel, steel heavy engineering, machine tools and heavy chemical industries were given high priority. Secondly, it was visualized that heavy industries will in induce development of small scale industries and growth will tickle down. In other words, as a result of the growth in heavy industries, growth will pro pro percolate below. This strategy, however, had its limitations as it put more emphasis on capital goods, which resulted in scarcity of essential commodities. The problem became acute in the latter years of second FYP, when there was food scarcity due to bad harvest. Consequently, in the subsequent plans, greater attention was given to agriculture, as opposed to the emphasis on the role of capital goods. The emphasis was on the role of consumer goods. Moreover, the strategy visualized that the current consumption needs of the people would be adequately meet through already available productive capacity and if some if some shortages arise the problem would be overcome by introducing state level controls government intervention however proved to be inadequate and the country had to import food grains in large quantities it put pressure on the already difficult balance of payment position of the country. Secondly, this strategy visualized full employment by realizing 5% annual increase in national income, which was not translated in terms of acute projects and expectations did not materialize. Materialize, materialize, materialize. The strategy did not result in trickle down effects and there was no reduction in income inequalities. A supporting institutional framework was required to be adopted as a policy measure to redistribute the existing assets. Therefore, land reform legislation was enacted for the redistribution of surplus land. The success of such institutional measures, however, is a debatable issue. Development strategy in the 60s. With the beginning of the third plan, 1961 to 66, it was felt that the Indian economy has entered the takeoff stage and first two FYPs generated the necessary institutional mechanism for rapid economic development. Consequently, in the third FYP, a goal of self-reliance was set. Learning from the experience of the first two FYPs, the third FYP accorded a high pro priority to agricultural agriculture along with the emphasis on the development of the basic industries. During this period, the development process ran into serious difficulties. The country had to import large quantity of food grains as a result of failing growth in agricultural output and rapidly increasing population. There was large trade deficit as, as huge investment in heavy industries required large imports without matching increase in, matching increase in exports. As a result, there was a decrease in saving rate, widespread, widespread unemployment particularly in rural India and concentration of economic power in the hands of few urban industrialists and rich farmers. At this juncture, several research studies indicated that income inequality had increased in the country which, indi which indicated the failure of planning. This led to rethinking on the development strategy and India observed a plan holiday during 1966-69. to 69. In 1969, when the FYP was resumed, the objective of economic growth and self-reliance was not given up. But the main emphasis got shifted from heavy industry to quick yielding projects and small-scale industry. Similarly, creation of infrastructure, including roads, was given priority. For development of agricultural sector, high yielding varieties 
of seeds hiv seeds and chemical fertilizers were given priority as compared to community development the fourth fyp set up before itself two principal objectives rapid growth in gross domestic product and progressive achievement of self reliance development strategy in the 70s and 80s the fifth fyp was introduced at a time when india was in deep economic crisis due to global hike in crude oil prices since the planners were interested in the slogan of garibi hatao and attainment of self reliance reliance it was envisaged to achieve these objectives through better distribution of income higher rate of rates of growth and by direct attack on the problem of unemployment under employment and acute poverty the fifth plan was terminated by the new janata party government one year before its completion and the sixth fyp was adopted in fact india had two sixth fyps practically 1978 to 83 and 1982 85 The sixth FYP adopted by the Janata Party in 1978-83 was di- discarded in 1980 with the change in government at the center. The sixth plan 1978-83 admired the achievements of earlier plans in India but criticized the Nehru Mahal Mahalanobis growth strategy holding it responsible for unemployment, growing poverty concentration of economic power in the hands of few and widening of income and wealth inequalities the focus of sixth plan 1978-83 was increasing the employment potential in agriculture and allied activities when the new sixth fyp 1982-85 was introduced by the congress government planners rejected the approach of janata party and brought back the earlier model of growth In order to tackle the problem of poverty there was direct attack on poverty by adopting programs like integrated rural development program and in national rural rural employment programs on the whole the sixth plan and undermined the role of public sector by reducing its share in total investment this plan was criticized on account of appeasing the pressure groups like farmers by giving unsust unsustainable increase in agricultural prices and and industrialists by relaxing licensing system and control more open door policy was followed towards foreign capital and multinational corporations hence by this period the policies were already swinging away and market started taking domination over the state the 7th fyp 1985 to 1990 was introduced with a change in the development strategy it was envisaged to bring down the rate of population growth because the gains of uh, growth often got got neutralized by fairly high growth rates of population there were four basic elements that signify a change in the strategy in this plan first it gave importance to higher agricultural production by relying more on new technology second it undermined the role of public sector and induced promotion promotion of private sector through industrial deregulation third this liberalization of imports it aimed at raising efficiency in the manufacturing sector fourth necessary changes in industrial and export import policies were made so that the role of the state changes from a regulatory to facilitatory authorities in totality this strategy was a, was as was as john w melver defines a strategy of agricultural development lead growth it was expected to show better result due to strong domestic links between agriculture and industry second less import intensity of investment in agriculture third greater employment potential in agriculture adlg strategy however did not lead to favorable results and hence there was call for a strategy of balanced growth balanced growth between agriculture and industry new development strategy during the late 1980s until 1992-91 the country faced several financial crises and the year 1991 turned out to be a difficult time for the economy india had to face serious foreign exchange problems problem and the government responded to the crisis in two ways number one short term stabilization measures and second long term structural measures the former measures were to restore the confidence 
of the government to manage balance of payment problem the latter were however long term measures were were government decided to introduce introduce substantial economic reforms to bring dynamism to the economy it took four major policy initiatives with number 1 macro economic stabilization number 2 trade policy reforms number 3 industrial policy reforms and number 4 public sector reforms details of these policy measures will be the subject matter of the unit on economic reforms since since 1992-91 two annual plans 1992-91 and 1991 to 92 and four fyps have been adopted so far fyps that is the 8th 9th 10th and 11th fyps the philosophy approach and strategy have been the same for 8th 9th and 10th uh, 10th the three fyps which are guided by measures of improving the performance and increasing the efficiency of the economy the focus in these fyps is different compared to earlier plans where people are not mere beneficiaries of development they are active participants in the development processes unlike earlier plans where where a centralized approach is followed the plans after 1990 have stressed more on decentralized and participatory approach of development 11th plan envisages envis, envisions on an economy and the provide provides for an opportunity to re- restructure restri- restructure existing policy with inclusive growth it aimed at putting the economy on a sustainable growth the tra- grow sustainable grow the tra- trajectory with a growth rate of the percent the key element of the strategy of inclusive growth is to provide access to basic facilities such as health education clean drinking water following points bring out the strategy uh, bring out the shift in the strategy of the plans during this phase greater flexibility in fiscal and monetary policies shift in policy from the focus on national targets to taking cognizance of the performance of different states in the country and efforts to towards bridging interstate inequality ensuring equality and social justice bringing full capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector reduction in the gestation lags of industrial and infrastructure investments rationalization of labor laws and regulations introducing financial sector reforms so that the viability and stability of financial institutions improves financial sector in india should be able to and willing to finance a range of activities that are of crucial importance both for growth and development reexamination of the subsidies provided to agricultural sector revival of public investment in irrigation and water measurement removal of the reservation policy for small scale industries in a phased manner without adv- adversely affecting employment opportunities development of telecommunications energy and housing sector on a priority basis making an decisive impact on equality of life of the majority of people especially poor and marginalized and setting social socio economic targets by making social interventions resource allocation in the indian plans investment patterns pattern of indian plans reflects the objectives and implementation of actual planning strategy therefore it is important to look at the resource allocation under various plans for a better view of resource allocation of the economy of view of resource allocation the economy can be divided into three main sectors <clears throat> that is that is agriculture industry and infrastructure importance of agriculture is self evident as majority of population in india still depends on it economic development and modernization processes process are interrelated <clears throat> as no country can develop without giving due emphasis to the development of industry similarly for sustaining the long term development of an economy infrastructure plays a very significant role unless transport and communication facilities are expanded no industry or business can flourish unless power generation is given due attention the whole 
प्रोग्राम ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन कैन सफर एंड एग्रीकल्चरल डेवलपमेंट कैन नॉट टेक प्लेस विदाउट एक्सपेंडिंग इरीगेशन फैसिलिटीज एज मैंशन अर्लियर द प्लान फर्स्ट द फर्स्ट प्लान हैड द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ करेक्टिंग द डिस इक्विबिरम एंड इनिशिएटिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑल राउंड डेवलपमेंट द इन्वेस्टमेंट पैटर्न वॉज अकॉर्डिंगली worked out with due regard to immediate and long term objectives the highest allocation was provided for transport and communication followed by irrigation and flood control since the first plan did not visualize any large scale industrialization program industries received only 3% of total resource allocation <clears throat> as noted earlier the second five year plan emphasized emphasized large scale industrialization consequently following a strategy of development of heavy and capital goods industries a substantial change in the investment pattern took place the share of industry and minerals was raised to 20% to of the total resource allocation the second highest after transport and communication which was allocated 27% of the total resources the second fyp also gave importance to village and small scale industries as compared to the first fyp and resource allocation was doubled from 2% to 4% in this period <coughs> agriculture and allied sectors were given less percentage of resources in the second plan compared to the first plan from 15% to 12% because of the change in priority the third fyp was almost double the size of the second fyp as the total expenditure increased from rs 4672 crore in the second plan to rs 8577 crore in third plan the expenditure on agriculture and allied activities were also doubled in absolute terms the percentage of total expenditure allo- allot- allotted to transport and communication though declined slightly from 27 to 24% it was still the highest in the third plan the resource allocation to industry and minerals was almost same to 20% of the total resources power received comparatively higher percentage of resources 15% in the third plan as against 9% in the second plan as mentioned earlier subsequent to the third fyp there was a plan holiday and three annual plans during 1966 to 69 were, were adopted the total expenditure under the three annual <coughs> plans was rs 6625 crore almost one fourth of the total resources went to industry and minerals 18% was went to transport and communication and power sectors while 17% was allocated to agriculture and allied sectors the growth importance of energy or, or power sector in the indian planning was evident as the resources accorded to the development of power continuously increased from 7.6% in the first plan to 18% in the three <coughs> annual plans this was particularly necessary under the condition of power shortages and its adverse effect on industrial production in the country The actual expenditure under the fourth plan was Rs 15,779 crore, as against the plan outlay of Rs 15,902 crore. In view of the growing concern of the planners towards emerging bottlenecks in the transport and communication sectors, it was allocated the highest percentage of resources, 19.5 percent. The second highest allocation of resources, 18.6 percent, was given to the power sector in the fourth plan. This was in view of the realization that future demand for power wa- was going to increase. Moreover, it was important not only to generate more capacity but the transmission and distribution of power were also required to be expanded. Industrial sector continued to receive high priority. Resource allocation under the fourth plan to this sector was 18%, marginally lower than the transport and communication sector. as well as the power sector since the third plan and annual plans period observed slow and erratic industrial growth it was imperative in the fourth plan to adopt such policies moreover despite recognizing the importance of village and small scale industries in generating employment this sector was still getting less and less proportion of resources agriculture and allied sectors were given high in, high investment demands of the green revolution strategy 
adopted since 1966 to 67 thus the planners rightly increased the resource allocation for agriculture as compared to previous plans the fifth fyp once again allocated the highest percentage of resources to industry and minerals at 23% followed by power at 19% of the total resources the transport and communication sector received 17% of total expenditure in the transport and communication sector received 17% of total expenditure in the fifth plan agricultural sector received lesser resources 12% as compared to the to previous plan the thirst was on plant development horticulture and livestock practices programs like minimum needs program drought prone area program the small farmers and agricultural laborer development program elementary education drinking water rural electrification and slum clearance were also given importance with the global increase in the prices of the crude oil in 1979 the government realized the increasing pressures on the resources and accordingly enunciated a new strategy where not only conventional resources con- conventional sources of energy were expected to be tapped but also renewable energy sources were, were to be exploited consequently the 6th fyp 8285 gave, gave priority to the power and energy sector and 28% of the total resources were allocated to this sector transport and communication received 16% the second highest share the 7th fyp 85 to 90 also followed the same trend and the large largest allocation of the resources went to the energy sector agriculture and allied activities including irrigation and flood control received the second highest 22% allocation of the resources followed by transport and communication 18% and industry and minerals 13% thus in the seventh plan a shift in the strategy towards power agriculture and rural development is observed in doing so the seventh plan sought a balance among the infrastructure sector production sector and human resource sec- development sector the eighth ninth and tenth plans conf- conformed with the same pattern in the allocation of resources a consistent decline in the resources resource allocation on agriculture and allied activities is observed in these plans while the share of irrigation was stable a growing proportion was allocated towards rural development and special programs the share of resources allocated to industry was also declining and in the 10th plan a clear picture emerged in favor of energy and transport and communication sectors 11th plan 7 to 12 recognized that overall financial system need no need to be strengthened and developed through improved regulatory me- mechanisms thus the plan envisages the growing role of private sector banks and pro- foreign in- financial institutions priority shifted to agriculture and industry compared to services sector however in both sir agriculture and industry many new areas were focused keeping keeping in mind the objective of inclusive growth and social justice to the poor and marginalized sections of society in doing so the significance of public private sector partnership was impressed upon summary in the present unit you learned about the pr- process of planning in india beginning with the first plan 1951 to 56 to the 11th plan 7 to 12 presently in operation the objectives appro- approach and strategy of the plans have been explained the unit also introduced you to the sector wise allocation of resources in each plan it explains that planning in india has come a long way overall its objective has been similar but the strategy to achieve these objectives has been changing depending upon the need need of the hour india that that started with the process of centralized planning is now following a more open and decentralized approach